Jacob Frankel joins us now live from Italy. Good to talk to you, Mr. Frankel. Good to have you on the show. Now, of course, your concentration is very much focused overseas for JP Morgan Chase, isn't it? So if I can get your take on the situation in Europe right now, what, in your opinion, should be the single most important priority for policymakers in this region? Well, Europe, of course, is uh, not a monolithic uh, continent. Uh, there are those countries that, uh, like Germany, where competitiveness has been enhanced recently. There are those countries, like uh, Italy, where competitiveness has been eroded. There are those countries with very large surplus in the current account of the balance of payments, again, like Germany. And there are others that have large deficit. In short, to make sure that the European zone is restoring its internal integrity, there should be much greater coherence in fiscal policies so that the large budget deficits in some of the countries will need to be reduced. The big challenge, however, is that we have short run versus long run. In the mm. short run, you really need to make sure that growth continues so it becomes very difficult to contract. On the other hand, in the long run, you must ensure that the public debt is not expanding excessively, in which case you need con to consolidate. The link between short run and long run in a situation where there is practically no credibility or reduced credibility is a very important challenge. And that challenge is not only specific to Europe. It's all over the world. In the United States, we have the very same situation where the debt of the federal government yes. is high and growing and yes. the debt limit debate only shows how difficult it has been to deal with politically. And Mr. Frankel, I'm just wondering the divergence, the vast divergence between economies within the Eurozone that you describe, does that mean that the monetary union as the situation stands now simply isn't a sustainable structure? Not necessarily, but it means that adjustments will need to take place and how they are resolved is still not clear. Some countries have a very, very large debt which uh, some say are providing some non-sustainable path and they will need to address it. But the most mm. important thing is that also the European Central Bank that has been overburdened recently because it has been extending its activities to beyond just price stability and financial stability but also to step into areas that were necessary according to its judgment to ensure the functioning of the markets this pressure will need to be alleviated by governments stepping in and carrying on their task in the combination. Mr. Frankel, what does this mean for the ECB's role going forward? Because as you say, they seem to have expanded their role well beyond price and financial stability. And once they have stepped into this territory, where essentially governments are relying on them to buy bonds, banks are relying on them for funding, it's going to be, it's easier said than done for them to simply step out of this territory then. It's going to be complex, isn't it? Well, it is. It is very complex. It is easier said than done. But uh, the leadership of the ECB is extremely competent and uh, highly professional and highly responsible. And it is in this regard that they had to walk this thin line between focusing narrowly on what used to be the case and between uh, recognizing that there are some systemic issues that at that point they were the only players in town because governments were not always ready and willing mm. and politically capable of delivering their task. Uh, there is no doubt in my mind that a rethinking needs to be taking place about the division of labor and about how to ensure that governments that are democratically elected in each country within the Union 
are operating in and, concert and to Mr. ensure Mr. Frankel, that the system remains sustainable. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but if I can quickly ask you one more question as, as we're running out of time. We're getting some U.S. jobs data out today, expected to show a slowdown in hiring. It's been very difficult in, in, in attempts to try and bring the overall rate of unemployment down. Do you think, are you sensing that conditions could end up justifying more stimulus in the U.S.? Well, in order to solve the issue of unemployment in the U.S., it, the solution is not just more deficits or more easing. The issue is structural. A very large proportion of the unemployed in the U.S. today have been unemployed for a very long period. More than 40 percent of the unemployed have been in the unemployment pool more than 27 weeks. The way to deal with it is through a very focused and earmarked retraining, job retraining, education and things of that type rather than just a very, very blunt general expansion of budgets. The issue is structural. Mr. Frankel, to underscore some of the, uh, the, the very complex issues and challenges facing the global economy and indeed the Eurozone that, that you have been discussing there in Chernobyl, we're getting some news coming into us now that the Greek economy is to shrink about 5% this year, so more than forecast. Can I get your response to that? Well, it uh, underscores indeed the urgency of the challenge. The entire world is growing at a slower rate than before. Advanced economies are uh, slowing themselves very, very rapidly. For a long period of time, it were the emerging markets that pulled this heavy train called the world economy. It is essential to keep markets open because that's the only mechanism by which some locomotives can still carry the rest of the train. But to remember all the time that uncertainty is the enemy of free enterprise and of investments and growth. There is a lot of uncertainty today, still in the regulatory process, still in the political process, still in the economic process, and investors are not inclined to expand and invest when they do not know how the future looks like. I think it is of prime importance mm -hmm. to have clarity and remove uncertainty. Good to talk to you. Thanks very much, Jacob Frankel, Chairman of JP Morgan Chase International.